Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 6 to 10 of the Algebra 2 New York Regents January 2015 released um, test questions. All right, so for problem number 6, we're going to be taking a look at um, the rule of the discriminant. We're going to be spending uh, more than usual time on this uh, problem just to make sure you thoroughly understand um, the role of the discriminant in describing the uh, nature of the roots of um, a quadratic equation. So if you don't want a detailed consideration of um, this problem, you can always skip ahead to um, the concluding part where we, we will solve the problem. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about um, the role of the discriminant in the context of this problem. It says, which equation has real, rational, and unequal roots? Okay, so if you take a look at these um, equations right here, you notice that um, A, B, and C are, are rational numbers, okay? So what we're going to do is create four cases um, where the discriminant can tell us um, detailed information about the nature of the roots, all right? So first of all, let's say we have a quadratic, okay? <clears throat> um, let... Uh, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero with um, a, b, and c um, as rationals. All right, so that's the standard form of the of a quadratic equation. Let's say a, b, and c are, are rationals. Then the discriminant, the discriminant. <clears throat> discriminant, let's call it um, the discriminant, let's call it D. And to find a discriminant, that's the radicand of the quadratic equation, right? The discriminant D, which is B squared minus 4AC, tells us, <coughs> tells us the following about the nature, about the nature of the roots, <clears throat> nature of the roots of the quadratic, okay? Nature of the roots of the quadratic equation. Okay, so like I said earlier, there are four cases, okay? Let's look at case number one. Let's title it cases. <clears throat> Case number one, what if you have the discriminant uh, with a negative sign? Let's say the discriminant is less than zero. If your discriminant b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, what does that tell you about the nature of the roots of this quadratic equation? Well, this implies that the roots are going to be, they're going to be imaginary imaginary <clears throat> and unequal, okay? Imaginary and unequal. Case number two, what if the discriminant is equal to zero in this case right here? If the discriminant is equal to zero, then what you're going to have is you're going to have roots that are real, real, equal, this is known as the double root, okay, real, equal, and guess what, and rational, okay, rational numbers can be expressed as a, as a quotient of two numbers, okay, so if the discriminant is equal to zero, you have two real roots that are identical um, and rational, all right, case number three, what if you have um, the discriminant uh, having a positive sign? What if the discriminant is positive and um, it's also a perfect square? Is this, it's positive and a perfect square. If the discriminant is positive and it's a perfect square, then the roots are going to be real. If the discriminant's 
is zero or greater, it's always going to be real, okay? Because you're taking the square root of either zero or a positive number, so it's always going to be real. The roots are going to be real. They're going to be unequal. And guess what? And rational, okay? One more case, case number four. <clears throat> what if your discriminant is greater than zero, positive, and an imperfect square? Okay, imperfect square like three or, or um, seven. An imperfect square, whose square root is not an integer. What is the nature of the roots in case four? Your roots are going to be, you're going to be real, Okay, because it's zero and greater, they're going to be unequal. And guess what? They're going to be irrational because you're taking the square root of a number that's an imperfect square. So you're going to have that square root component in your roots. Okay, so these are the four cases um, using the signs and the uh, uh, nature of the discriminant to determine what the nature of the roots of the quadratic will be. All right. Okay, now let's go back to the problem. So it says, which equation has real, rational, and unequal roots? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these four options, find a discriminant value of all four of them, and then see which one um, <clears throat> is going to be, which one will have real, rational, and unequal roots, okay? So if you look at the four cases we have here, the discriminant that is greater than zero and a perfect square is going to be real, unequal, and rational. That's what we're looking for here. Real, unequal, and rational. So we're looking for the, the options that match case three. Okay, positive discriminant that is also a perfect square. So let's keep that in mind. Okay, so what we'll do now is just um, go through each option and calculate the value of the discriminant and use the solution to describe the nature of the roots. All right, let's take a look at option number one. So for option one, we have the quadratic equation, uh, x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals zero. From this format, we can clearly see what a is. Uh, we can put a one here. So that's A, B, and C, okay? So we have, this is A, B, and C. So A is equal to 1, B is equal to 10, and C is equal to 25. What are we looking for? We're looking for the discriminant. The discriminant B is given by B squared minus 4AC from the quadratic formula, the radical component. All right, what's the value of this? Substitute these values into your radicand expression, and we'll have 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times 25. Uh, and then um, using your order of operations, we have 100 minus 4 times 25, 100, which is equal to 0. Okay, so this is case number 2, where you have a 0 discriminant. So since the discriminant is equal to 0, that tells us that the roots are going to be, they're going to be real equal, that's a double root situation, and rational, okay? Is that what we're looking for in the problem? We're looking for real, rational, and unequal, but we have equal, so this is not an ans the answer we're looking for. Okay, so number one is not the answer. We'll advance to option two. Option two, we have x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. And then this is, put the 1 here for a. So we have a, b, and c. Okay, so we're looking for the value of the discriminant. a is 1. B is negative 5, and C is equal to 4. Okay, so um, let's see. The discriminant D is equal to B squared minus 4AC. Okay, so if we plug in these values into this expression, we'll have negative 5 squared 
minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is four, okay? I neglected to put a parenthesis here. That's a bad practice. Anytime you're evaluating an expression, um, substituting um, values into an expression, you always want to use parentheses, okay? They're for your protection to prevent you from making um, errors associated with signs or powers, okay? So always use parentheses when you're substituting, especially when you're um, working with the quadratic formula and the discriminant, okay? So we have that expression there. Using the order of operations, negative five square, this square impacts both the five and the negative, so we have 25. Minus 4 times 4 is 16. 25 minus 16 is 9. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the discriminant is what? Positive. The discriminant is positive. Not only is it positive, it is a perfect square. Okay, so d is greater than 0 and a perfect square and a perfect square. <coughs> So if it's greater than zero and a perfect square, what case are we looking at here? Uh, case number three, greater than zero and a perfect square. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and tell, write down what this tells us about the roots. If it's greater than zero and a perfect square, that implies that the roots are, the roots are definitely real because you're rooting a positive number, they are unequal, unequal, because it's not zero, and since this is a perfect square, they're going to be rational, okay? And this is exactly what we want. If we go back to the options that we have, uh -oh. if we go back to the options that we have, <coughs> we'll see that um, case number three, corresponds with what we desire, real, rational, and unequal roots, our answer for this problem is option number two, okay? So that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. If you have any questions or comments, include it in the comment section below this video and we'll be glad to address it as soon as possible. More clips can be found on mathgodserve.com. Thanks again for watching, and have a wonderful day.